Again, we import some libraries. The key thing is here, we define dropout function. The input is x, and we specify the drop probability. So we know that it should be larger than zero, uh, uh, not less than zero, not larger than one. Then if dropout is equal to one, we just return zeros because we drop out everything. The reason we cannot do a, space, a special case is because it's hard to normalize it. Then otherwise, we sample some uniform result between zero and one, are given the same shape of x, and get the one is larger than the dropout probability. This is mask. Then we return x tends the mask and rescale by the one minus dropout probability. So that is, uh, we implement, re-implement the dropout definition. Then some examples here, let's just uh, do gender, gender x. If you do dropout probability equal to zero, we keep everything here. If drop half of the results, it's like every time, uh, every time should be give you different results. Um, well, it's still training, so oh, still training on that letter. But if we specify probability equal to one, we drop everything we have. So again, we implement the, like a three layer, uh, two uh, uh, multi layer perception with two hidden layers. So again, we using the fashion uh, M list data set, which is the input is 784, the output is 10 classes. The only thing here, we choose the first hidden layer output 256 output, the second hidden layer actually output more, like 512. So that's the two hyperparameter we choose. The lib a little bit over complex models to try and uh, fashion MNIST. So here's the thing, how to apply dropout to um, the networks. We define two probabilities. We drop different probability for different layer. Because the first the hidden layer is Libya simple, the second one is Libya complex, we use a small probability drop for the first layer and it's a high probability for the last layer. So that's the hyperparameter you're gonna choose. Usually, um, here we use a small models. If you use a complex models, usually the choices you can try is like 0 0.5, 0 0.9, or 0 0.99 sometimes. It's very complex models. Then, uh, we do, this is the input we sh reshape. Let me do uh, a little bit. This, uh, this compute does the first uh, hidden layer, that's as usual. Then here's the thing. When we are on the training model, we apply dropout to the H1. When it is an inference model, we doesn't apply dropout. <coughs> Similar thing for the second one, the, the second of hidden layers, we only apply dropout to the output of this layer if it's during training, and uh, we give different probabilities here. Lastly, we re return the last frequency layer. So we usually don't apply dropout to the last output layer, because last output layer is used to actually def to, to predict each category you don't want to, okay, this, this time half of the category is gone, and then you have a very large loss. So now we can train. Um, train is no different to before. The only thing that we drop out is applied here. So we can see that the gap between uh, the training accuracy and the test accuracy is a little bit smaller. Um, it's actually very close to each other. Um, sometimes the validation accuracy, actually the validation accuracy is even higher than the training accuracy. So then this is like, it happens a lot of time. You see the training accuracy, uh, the testing accuracy is higher than the training accuracy because you're adding a lot of noise to, during training. Actually, um, these noises make your training accuracy smaller. Okay, um, 
to implement dropout in Gruon, it's pretty simple. We have a layer called a dropout that you add in this layer into a network as a normal layer into the network. It's a behavior as the same thing as we defined before. This layer performs dropout when you, in the autograd scope, it does nothing in the inference model. And you can specify the dropout probabilities here. Um, you also can train that. Also, similarly, you can see that the test accuracy actually is higher than the training accuracy. That is because we give a very strong recognition here. The last thing we're gonna try that without dropout, what will be happened? It's a little bit slow, uh, let me try that. So let's change dropout to be zero and zero. So without dropout. Because we need to reinitialize the weight. If we don't do that, we just try from the last time we have. So let's reinitialize to random values. And defined. You may guess you may guess what will be happen. Any guess? Will be a different. Actually, you will not see too much difference here. The reason is because we use a tiny models here. So we have 6,000 as. 16,000 images on the training data set, and this is fresh M list, and it actually is more complex than the M list data set we have. So it's pretty complex data set. We construct pretty actually, pretty similar models. The overfitting is actually small. Adding regularizations or dropout here is, doesn't make sense too much. So let's see. So comparing to the last one we have, actually you don't see much difference. Don't, you can do that, but the only thing you see is that the training accuracy is much higher than before. So here, the training accuracy here is almost like, before it's smaller, but at the end is training accuracy pretty high, and then with dropout, the training accuracy is a little bit slower here. So because it's regularization actually make the training accuracy uh, lower. If you want to see the, really the benefits of dropout, you can, what you can do is you can increase the number of hidden layers here. You can change to 1024 because I run the max is pretty slow, I won't do that. You, you change to a very large number, usually you can do a um, um, very large number, then dropout will have more effort, uh, effect on that. In practice, well, if the data set is relative uh, simple and you, you want to get the, you want to build complex models, for example, you're gonna construct the neural network have maybe four hidden layers and each hidden layer is pretty a lot, a lot of hidden units, you can apply dropout. So from practice, maybe um, for the homework four, what you can do is like, you can see the training error and the validation error. You're gonna see the validation, uh, cross validation, uh, validation accuracy. If you, s you think the training loss is too small, uh, the training loss is too high, then you can increase the number of layers you can have, increase the hidden units you can have. But if you see the gap is large, you have two approaches here. One is that you can apply weight decay. The other one that you can apply dropout. You can apply, insert dropout to the output of the hidden layer and you can specify the dropout probabilities. You can try either 0 0.5 or 0 0.9, that's a popular choice, otherwise you don't need to add a dropout. <laughs>